Hello. The Brexville Broadview Heights City School District is dedicated to being a place where fine education is a heritage. Yet as a backdrop to our amazing academic and co-curricular achievement, our district's elementary facilities are in dire need of attention. Dating back to 2013, the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission's assessment of the school district's elementary schools determined they are beyond normal maintenance and upkeep. In fact, our facilities are in need of nearly $100 million of repairs. From the outside of the buildings, the community may think everything is fine. This video will share with you some of the current conditions in our buildings where our youngest students are learning. Let's take a closer look. Let's begin at Central School, a building that was constructed in 1916. The student's main entrance is also used as a loading dock for 18-wheelers and other delivery vehicles. Overlooking students at the pedestrian walkway is the stack which is wrapped in black netting to capture brick shards and masonry from falling on those below. Inside the maze-like entrance, students must learn under lights without diffusers, non-compliant elevator entries, and a gymnasium and multiple computer labs that are only accessible by stairway, preventing our students with special needs from equal access. In the boiler room, the main electrical panels for the buildings are located in a place where water routinely seeps inside in pools on the floor. The structural deterioration of the building is evident and beyond normal maintenance. The main technology infrastructure is so outdated that a dial-up modem is actually used to power the HVAC controls. Continuing on to Highland Elementary School. We first begin by crossing a large natural gas line at the front of the property, just as students, staff, and visitors do each and every day. Neither Highland nor Chippewa or Hilton have central air conditioning. Take a look at the server room at Highland. The main technology hub for the building is shared with janitorial and other cleaning supplies. The utilities for the entire building run throughout the hallways. Asbestos continues to be in place in our buildings for pipe insulation and other building materials. Casing for the main electrical lines is deteriorating and leads to the main electrical distribution room where outside groundwater routinely seeps in and pools on the floor. Water has so severely damaged the walls, they are nearly impossible to maintain. Most startling is the structural slab settling and the cracking asbestos tiles precisely where children learn. Chippewa Elementary School experiences very similar structural and facilities deficiencies. Once again, the HVAC controls are powered by a dial-up modem, seriously compromising the efficiency of the building's main heating system. The telephone system is dramatically outdated. Here too at Chippewa, the server room doubles as a storage supply closet. In four different locations at Chippewa, ramps are too steep to meet basic Americans with Disabilities compliance. A closer look at the window thresholds reveal rot and deterioration. Teachers are forced to get creative when it comes to accommodating the students in their rooms, oftentimes running many cords, multi-purposing their classrooms for storage and promoting education that is physically undesirable for classroom environments. Finally, at Hilton Elementary School, once again, there is no central air conditioning. We find exposed wiring on the external facade of the building. In the gymnasium, tables are actually mounted to the walls so leaders can transform it into a cafeteria for lunch service. As we now see to be a pattern, the HVAC controls are powered by the 1990s technology of a dial-up modem. Server rooms are doubled as storage for equipment and cleaning supplies. The sanitary sewer at Hilton also services three other buildings on this site, creating significant issues when the sewer backs up. The district routinely cleans and repairs this sewer to keep it flowing. As you can see, the buildings and facilities where our youngest students are learning in the Brexville Broadview Heights City Schools are in desperate need of repair and upgrade. Despite our valiant efforts for upkeep and maintenance, the state of Ohio rendered costs to repair these conditions in excess of 57% of the cost to actually replace the facilities. This is the case for all four of our current elementary schools. The decision in our minds became clear. This is why the Board of Education, with the input from our Citizens-Based Facilities Planning Committee, has decided to pursue a bond issue this coming May to eliminate the old buildings that are in need of major repair and to construct one brand new state-of-the-art pre-K-5 elementary building that will feature modern safety and security systems, better electrical systems to keep up with technology needs of our future and be fully handicapped accessible. 
Plus, constructing one new pre-K-5 elementary building will allow the district to save approximately $1 million per year in operating costs. The district is committed to keeping the same millage our community is currently paying on the bond that helped build the high school 20 years ago. You can learn more about this issue by visiting us online. Please join the Brexville Broadview Heights City School District in this project to construct a single new pre-K-5 elementary school that lives up to the quality and standards that everyone in our community deserves. Thank you for watching and please remember to vote on May 8, 2018.